Come closer, my friends. Behold the face of destiny. Now spin your Cadbury's cream egg with me and discover how will you eat yours. One, eat your egg slice. Two, find the star and lick it off. Three, eat it whole in one. Four, spin some more. Five, give your egg a good licking. I've seen the future. And it's egg shape. How will you eat yours? Hoople deep former tiddly peeps, welcome to the television affair. I'm Johnny, and today, for a change in the scheduled programming, we'll be looking at the history of the Box Plus network. I grew up watching music channels, and as well as the radio, it was the main thing I had on in my life during my teenage years. I actually grew up thinking that music television could have been a bit more like radio was. Having music videos with entertaining bits in between from presenters, prizes, and interactivity. Well, it was some of this some of the time, but usually music TV consisted of non-stop music with adverts. iTunes in your phone, baby. Hello, Recently, Channel 4, who owns the Box Plus network, announced they would be getting rid of it by the end of the year, and other small-scale linear channels that aren't making them any money are to follow when the time is right. I've got some thoughts on what the alternative could be, as I like to do, but first, let's look at where we are now. And I just got to mention that I go off on radio tangents here a lot on this, because many of the TV channels were spin-offs from the radio version, so I'll be exploring how that brand came to be. This is a little icebergy, so I've tried to keep it as simple as possible and put everything into context and try and keep the tangents I'm going to go off on as small as I can. Call now. Music television, you control. All music videos, all the time. Call now. Select a video on the box. The first of the channels was The Box. It was owned by Video Jukebox Network and it launched in 1992 in the UK, although the format had been successful in the US previously and it was kind of already working well in the UK. There was a channel on cable called Cable Jukebox, which aired on the cable networks in the UK, and the Lifestyle Satellite Jukebox, which aired across Europe from the mid-80s to the early 90s. They generally did the same thing. Have a look at the music videos they've got to offer, either on teletext or pick the music via the uh, music trailers that they used to play on the TV, and then you'd call a number up, make a music selection, and then they'd play it. Teletext, if you don't know what that was, was sort of the closest thing to the internet on your TV back in the 1980s and 90s um, it used to be information that went through the tv signal that received pages of text only content you couldn't send text back or uh, message anybody else with it it was just an information service just like a like a newspaper on the telly also just like the internet some countries did have some special sexy sexy sex sex teletext anyway cable jukebox and lifestyle satellite jukebox were owned by wh smith tv you know the guys that um, have those shots Shops in the corner of train stations and uh, other places. Yeah, that stationary retailer based in the centre of the world, like everything else, once had a TV network as well as owning Do It All, the DIY shop. We've been doing it as well. Anyway, they closed their TV division in 1993, so there was a bit of an overlap where the box and cable slash satellite jukebox existed. The box, again, only available on cable to start with, uh, on United Artists Cable in the Midlands, and then Telewest in London and Bristol, and then 9X in the South and Videotron in London. The box would later roll out across the cable networks, and that was slowly merging throughout the 1990s. The Video Jukebox Network International was purchased by EMAP in 1997. It launched its own channel on satellite in 1998. And when we went to go and buy a new TV in the summer of 1999, I remember walking around the various TV shops showcasing the latest widescreen TVs with the box piped in via Sky Digital. It was a time to be alive. You could also get it on the older satellite system on the same channel as Granada Men and Motors, but you'd have to be awake at 2am until 6 o'clock in the morning to be able to catch that. In 2000, EMAP sold the US side of the box to MTV Networks in an act of protect the queen at all costs. They closed that in 2001. There was a Dutch version, but that was sold to Viva, who was already a successful music channel across Europe. And by 2005, it also became part of the Viacom family and was changed into a comedy channel called The Box Comedy and later Comedy Central. <laughs> 
after launching on Sky Digital, the box and the other channels on the network were criticised for quite a few things. One was whether the music selection thing actually worked or if it was a scam. You had to call up a premium rate number to make a selection and then people wouldn't be watching when their song didn't come on. Although some took to forums online saying that it just takes a long time for your selection to come up. If you think about it, so many people would be making selections, it would be in its hundreds. Plus the box had rules on how often a video could be played next to each other. Here's the 411 on the box. When you call to order a video, it's automatically put in queue. So don't call for it again until you see it play, because the same video will not play back to back. Everyone who calls for a video will get charged. If your buddy calls for the same video that you did while the video's in queue, it's still only going to play once. The box is about anybody and everybody seeing their favorite videos. So now that that's out of the way, what are you waiting for? Control your music here on the Box Music Network. If they didn't, then basically someone would keep on repeating to say, I want to watch Sandstorm by Darude all day, and everyone else would get pissed off and switch off. The lack of songs on the playlist was also another issue, meaning that um, it would only play the same songs over and over until the playlist changed. In 2007, Bauer purchased EMAP and then EMAP sold all their channels to Bauer because that's how businesses do things. Channel 4 took a 50% share in the box network, but by this time they dropped the interactive bit and I'm not really sure when they stopped doing that, but there's a few reasons why they might not want it to continue. It might not have been financially viable, it also might have been a difficult task in regards to technical abilities, or the system might not be as stable. Plus, considering how many people could be making requests, it might have been a bit of a strain on the tech. Eventually, they would drop the music request element but would continue to play a variety of music videos mostly back to back with commercials and the odd promo for its other channels mostly E4 and 4 music. The music would generally be mainstream music and the shows would mostly have stuff like artist versus artist like Britney versus Christina or David Guetta versus Diplo. It would have stuff like playlists of Valentine's songs or a countdown of the top 20 music videos. During November and December, it would rebrand to Boxmas with Christmas songs being included. In 2019, Channel 4 would take the rest of the 50% share of the Bauer network and the Bauer brands are now licensed to Channel 4. That's because their channel names were based on magazines and radio stations that EMAP owned and that Bauer currently own now. That includes our next channel, Kiss. Here is, here is, 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 is. Hello everyone, w welcome to KISS. KISS launched in June 1998 and it first aired on live TV for an hour a day on cable. Just like the box, you could pick what songs it played and the difference was that KISS TV was based on the EMAP owned radio station of the same name, KISS 100, broadcasting from London. There was a KISS 105 in Yorkshire and Humberside as well as KISS 102 in Greater Manchester but they weren't owned by EMAP, they were owned by Chrysalis Radio and they changed their names to Galaxy 102 and Galaxy 105 in 1997 when EMAP wanted their name back. I'll get into Galaxy branding in a minute, um, but at this point EMAP had already established local radio stations in those areas. Key 103 in Manchester, Radio City in Liverpool, Radio Air in Leeds, Hallam FM in Sheffield and Viking FM in Hull, but back then they were only allowed one radio station per area. Oh! Kind of. It was all about competition restrictions which I'm not going to get into. There would be two other kisses outside London. Kiss 101 was based in Bristol and that started life as FTP standing for the people on 97.2 FM in 1990 and after a year of being independent it was purchased by Chilton Radio who named it Galaxy 97.2. They won their first regional license in 1994 and switched frequencies to 101 FM to broadcast to a wider area. 97.2 was GWR FM Swindon Frequency which isn't actually that far away from Bristol, which meant at that point it was quite difficult to listen to Galaxy. Well, at least for me, or anyone that lived in Wiltshire. Anyway, that became Galaxy 101. In May 1995, Chilton was purchased by GWR Group, and with Galaxy being GWR Bristol's rival, and already in the area, it was sold to Chrysalis Radio by October. Chrysalis Radio invested one million dollars I mean pounds in Galaxy and made it a national brand when they renamed the KISS stations to Galaxy 
The reason why I'm still rabbiting on about this is because in 2002, Galaxy wasn't doing so well in Bristol, so they were sold back to GWR, who rebranded it as Vibe 101, and then they sold it to EMAP, who renamed it KISS 101. It started sharing various programs from that point, and there was also another KISS, KISS 105 to 108, and this was originally a group of radio stations known as the Radio Essex Group. They were bought by GWR and Scottish Radio Holdings as a joint thing, and renamed to Vibe Radio, like the other ones, and sold again to EMAP, who then renamed them all KISS. All the kisses would start sharing programs more regularly, and then they would merge into one big sloppy KISS. Just for information purposes, so I know I've completely put the matter to bed, all the Galaxy stations would disappear when the GWR group and the Capital Radio group and the Chrysalis Radio group all merged a few times with some other groups and they became a company called Global. Their main brands these days are Capital and Heart. The former EMAP stations were transferred to its parent company, Bauer Media. After seeing what Global had done, Bauer went on a station spending spree, buying out all these local little radio stations and radio networks that they could get that were financially struggling, and rebranded them all as Hits Radio and Greatest Hits Radio, which are currently their biggest brands these days. Anyway, KISS TV was a TV version of the radio station in the sense that KISS would play dance and R&B for under 35s, and it would regularly air the TV version of Kistery, which was a strand playing old school music, like dance anthems and classic hip hop. KISS would eventually drop the request part, just like the other box channels, and in 2013 KISS launched some new radio stations, Kistery playing old school music, and KISS Fresh playing new and current music. <laughs> Q launched in October 2000 and its brand was based on the Q magazine that EMAP owned. The promos for the channel included Martin Freeman, now known for his Hollywood roles, in 2000 being a musician, and this predates The Office by about a year. The magazine was mostly about indie pop culture. The channel played indie rock and alternative music and it was available in Ireland, Iceland and South Africa as well as the UK. The channel predated its sister station Kerrang! by about six months, so when that launched, more of the hard rock and heavy metal shifted over there. The TV channel stayed on air until 2012, but the radio version lasted until 2013 when KISS launched some new radio stations on DAB. On the TV, a Q rebranded to Heat in 2012 and the magazine version was all about celebrity gossip, so the TV channel went the same way, having a celebrity news segment and played pop music, similar to the radio station version. The radio version continued on DAB until 2019 and is now online only. The TV channel lasted until 2016. That was when it was rebranded to a spin-off of the box, Box Up Front. It played fresh music, mainly pop, and it was around until November 2019 when it became Boxmas, and that didn't come back in January. It closed on the 9th of January, still branded as Boxmas. The Hits was also a TV channel part of the Box Plus network and based on EMAP slash Bowers radio station The Hits. It launched in 2002 and mostly played hits from the past 20 years with countdowns of current music and themed playlists. In 2008, the 4 Music strand would then later launch on the channel featuring some Channel 4 comedy programmes and also covering festivals like V Festival and T4 on the Beach. The channel would fully rebrand in August 2004 as 4 Music. Additional to music videos, it would play some repeats of Channel 4 shows like the IT Crowd, Phone Jacker and Banzai, as well as Taskmaster and some classic American shows such as Buffy, Charmed, Malcolm in the Middle, Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Scrubs. The channel would rebrand to E4 Extra in 2022 and the 4 Music brand would move to the old Box Hits channel. Welcome to E4 Extra. 
Right, that's it for part one because we've still got a heck ton to go through. Next time we'll be looking at the Magic brand and the other channels in the network. Thanks to all the following team members on YouTube and Patreon. Those include Joseph Adams, Stephen Bride, Hooter Noodles, Matthew Beckley, Mark Jackson, Manuel Mobius, Chris Elliott, Tracker John and Samuel Desmond. The executive producers were Tim Goodwin and Computer Tom. I've been Johnny Robinson and I'll still be Johnny Robinson after this video is finished. Thank you, bye.